Let's hit it. The Andrew Feller. What's up, the Patrick Bill Bill. It's been a long time since we talked, dude. It's been like five What's it been, minutes. like six or seven minutes? Maybe seconds, even. Oof. They can drag on. Yeah, they can, dude. So, if you guys don't know who this is, this is Andrew Feller. Dude's an absolute beast over here in Dallas, Texas. Uh, man, crazy weight loss transformation, crazy knee transformation. Probably the mindset, too. I never knew you beforehand, but just like talking through some experiences you've gone through, definitely made some changes. This man used to weigh nearly 300 pounds and uh, dropped a good chunk of that and has been crushing it over here in Dallas, Texas training, dude. Um, I would love to just hear, you know, in this, this conversation is what it's been like for you the past like few months starting a brand new business as a trainer in a city where you never had done that before in your life. Yeah, man, in a word, it's been adventurous. Yeah. Yeah. Like you say, the, uh, not only have I never done anything like this in Dallas, I've never done anything like this ever, anywhere. Yeah. And so prior to this, I'd always worked for somebody else, whether that was in a degree field or waiting tables or something of that nature. So to then step into the entrepreneurial realm, especially in a city where I didn't have a lot of connections built out. Um, I actually moved here about three years ago. I have one buddy, shout out to Tony Trant. Uh, <laughs> that's my man. He actually gave me a spot to live when I first came and kind of convinced me to come. At the time, I was not sure what I was going to be doing kind of with my life, if you will. I had a finance degree. I have a finance degree, and so I was looking at um, getting a job with Charles Schwab. Yeah. And I had something lined up actually at their Westlake location, and hence why Tony offered his house as a potential uh, spot to land. And ended up not doing that because I wanted to really focus on getting healthy. At that point in time, uh, I still had a pretty broken body. I, I always said I felt like a 75 year old man with arthritis. Yeah. And I was <laughs> 22 at the time, like had just turned 23 maybe. And I've been in Dallas for that long now. Yeah, so it just hit Whoa. like just over Six three years. years. Well, you're 28, right? Yeah, so my math is not mathing. Yeah. yeah. So I was 25. Okay, okay. That's right. Yeah, that reverse. 25, okay. So yeah, because I moved here in 2021. Because your era with the roofing was like early 20s? Yeah, it was 2020 through 2021. Okay, so, two years. yeah, okay, so thank you for correcting that. Yeah, the finance guy's math is not financing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I decided not to do the, the finance gig. Instead, I got a job waiting tables, and I actually had found, uh, you and I are both really familiar with Ben Patrick's work, yeah. uh, the Knees Over Toes guy. Shout out to him because um, I found his work back then when I moved to Dallas, and I basically decided to build my entire life around just doing the programs and getting healthy. And I was able to start, like, sitting crisscross applesauce and like going for walks again and just getting yeah. basic function back and you i kind of got a picture addicted. of you like probably like 24 or something like that and you're like dude look at the squat for me i thought it was amazing and you were like barely <laughs> breaking parallel i think i don't even While think i was parallel yeah. and i was definitely using assistance and so man how yeah. far we've come but for me that was a major breakthrough right you know it was like the idea of squatting it was foreign in mm. fact, I, would, I rejected it. I was one of those anti-nobody-should-squat mm. guys just because every time I did, I was always met with so much pain and resistance. And so all of that just to kind of set the stage for where I was at in my life going into the entrepreneurial journey, um, I spent about two and a half years in that pocket of let me just get myself healthy and learn these systems and kind of adjust to the lifestyle associated with maintaining those improvements that I had made. Yeah. And all the while, working a part-time job waiting tables. Which, fun fact, Patrick and I worked less than a football field apart from each other for over a year yeah. and never knew it. And not only that, but our restaurants were sister companies. companies. So it and was, you would deliver the bread every Thursday, which was the only morning that I worked. Too. And so we had to have yeah. seen each other at least once. There's a crazy mirror there. So waiting tables and bartending at like literally across the street for almost, I would say at least a year and a half almost. Yeah. yeah. A good yeah. chunk of change. Good chunk of change, bro. I remember uh, we had a guy that we worked with named Ken and he always used to say, 
I got my boy Patrick over at R&D. <laughs> <laughs> the good I was dude, like, whatever, man. that Patrick guy, man. I'm hearing yeah. enough about him. <laughs> <laughs> man, the journey's been nuts. Yeah, for both of us it has. And so, so that what, was kind of the buildup, too. Yeah, now that you're in it, man, like, so for those of you guys that don't know, he's a personal trainer. We're at the same gym right now. Self-made training facility Self-made in the training. design district, Dallas. Come on. And uh, you start out with like zero clients, dude. Yeah. Well, yeah, you could even, yeah, zero clients and zero leads. And in fact, my whole strategy was find a guy who is already ahead of me and almost at that point where they had an overflow of clients and maybe they were wanting to get out of the gym a little bit or maybe they were wanting to scale and kind of it's not trade all of their day doing sessions, but maybe building a team. Yeah. And my whole thought there was if I could find somebody, number one, that had that, they were doing something right on both the business and the training side. They were obviously mm-hmm. getting results if they had that many clients. And if they had grown to that level, then they probably knew what they were doing on the business end as well. And me, not having any experience on training other people and getting other people results, which is turns out entirely different than getting yourself results, mm-hmm. and having never ran my own business before I really had two massive skill gaps if you will and I didn't want to solve them both at the same time so I figured it would be most important to get good at my craft let me figure out how do I translate what I've done for myself into other people getting results and so that was why I wanted to find somebody who was already at that threshold of an overflow of potential clients so that I could almost do you know like a mentorship or like an apprenticeship with them and not have to worry about discovering how to get my own clients and just focus on helping the people that were in front of me. And that's where Patrick came into play, uh, Ashley. And as far as this whole journey is concerned, like that's the greatest gift that I've been given thus far is having found you and Sammy. Shout out to Sammy. Shout out Sammy, bro. She does a lot. She does so much, <laughs> man. Yeah, I'll never forget the day that I met you two at the farmer's market, you and your community event. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you guys kind of took me in like family, bro, right off the rip. It was pretty cool. Dude. I was literally a little suspicious. I was like, eh, this guy's like, we're moving in pretty quick. Like, I'm like, <laughs> it might be something. It might not be something. Yeah, but it turned into something, dude. Yeah, well, I would have been suspicious, too. Quite yeah. frankly. I was suspicious. I was like, why yeah. is this guy helping me? Like, why? What's going on? Like, why is on? this guy wearing a wife beater, too? <laughs> yeah, why like, did we work at the same restaurant? Yeah, what's going on, dude? <laughs> there were a lot of strange overlaps. We found out we yeah. liked. We played a lot of the same video games. We were in a lot of the same things. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's turned into much more than just a partnership, yeah, which yeah. I'm very grateful to say. Um, but in doing that, I was able to learn from you, and you've been doing this, I mean, we always say a decade. You're getting pretty close to a decade. Pretty close. I started rounding up to a decade once it hit, like, six years. Uh, that's fair. <laughs> we round up, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, we round up. We I'll round probably up. round up to 15 years once I pass the 10. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, a decade has a good rate yeah. to it. Uh, and so that was focus number one, you know, was just figure out how to do this for other people. But at a certain point, you know, you got to just jump in the water and start right. to swim, right? And we got to that point to where it was time for me to jump in the water and start to swim. And uh, then it was time to learn the business side as well, yeah. which is kind of like an ongoing process, always learning how to do that better. Uh, but that's when it really started to feel like, you know, I'm an entrepreneur now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this is real we're really doing this what do you feel like you know now that you didn't know like six months ago when you started and i've been drinking out of a fire hose for six months I feel yeah. like there's so many things that i know now that i didn't used to know the uh the primary things i'll say are this like number one although i did eventually start and i eventually did jump i wish i had done it sooner Right, yeah. so the number one thing that I've learned is that you're never gonna know everything you need to know. And if you're just waiting to start until you know everything you need to know, then it's, you're never gonna start. Yeah. And I would tell myself to just get started. How long did you hold the idea in, the, in your pocket and not run with it, like training and starting your own business? I've always wanted to start my own business. Okay, so that's, that's been it. Never had any idea what it would be. Yeah. I kept having the thought about it being personal training for probably almost two years leading up to actually doing it. Was I qualified at that two-year mark? Eh, probably not. My testimony wouldn't have been as strong if I had started then as mm. if I had waited until I did. 
Yeah. But I mean, certainly for at least a year where I would have been qualified, I thought about it and I was thought about it and I thought about it, yeah. made reasons why I wasn't gonna do it. So that would be the first thing I would say is just go. But then in addition to that, <coughs> I've learned that whenever you're doing something that's really aligned with who you are, mm -hmm. even when it's really hard, and make no mistake, it has been really hard, it's fine. Yeah, dude. It's, it's fine. It's time, man. It's fun, bro. So those, those are my two probably big takeaways. Yeah, and a year goes by quickly, too. Especially when you're not doing what you enjoy. Mm. It goes by very quick. You just look back, and you're like, what, what happened, dude? What it's do such I have a blessing. to show for it? We talk about it a lot, but like being able to do what we love every day is nuts, dude. Um, yeah. I would love to hear, man, because I haven't caught up with you on this in a while. What's it been like in the past few months, not just like growing in your business, but your faith is like, you got a cool relationship with uh, J-Dog Millionaire, as we were calling him this morning. J-Dog 10,000. Yeah. <laughs> the Messiah. The Messiah, in know. case you were unaware like I was. <laughs> yeah, man, like what's that been like? Because those two seem to have gone pretty parallel. Yeah, you know, that's, um, I'm really happy you asked that, man. If you had asked me a year ago if I was a man of faith, I would have said yes. If you had asked me if I believed in God, I would have said yes. You had asked me if I believe in Jesus Christ yeah. and was a Christian. I don't know what I would have said. And if I that said yes, lie. I think I would have lied. Yeah, yeah. You know, it would have been kind of like, I think he wants me to say yes. So, you know, I grew up going to church, kind of. Mm -hmm. Like we went sometimes. But, you know, all respect to my parents, their faith wasn't exactly stout. And so I kind of took on that one foot in, one foot out approach to the faith and I kind of pick and chose the parts that logically made sense to me and my limited experience on life. Was it the same on mom and dad's side or was it a little bit different? Same on mom and dad's side for sure. Yeah. My mom grew up extremely religious and, and very much rebelled against it and so my dad was kind of the one who was like we should still go to church. Yeah, trying to hold it down. Trying to hold it down but he wasn't like very stalworthy on that. It was more of like this is what we should do so we're going to do it. Mm. And I definitely respect that. But in terms of delving into as a kid why we believed what we believed and what do we believe, I didn't really have any of those deep conversations. And so now fast forward to today, as I said, I got to meet you and Sammy. And one of the best compliments I can give Patrick is that he, number one, is exactly who you think he is <laughs> all the time. And he's the first man that I've ever met that is a Jesus lover with not being a Jesus thumper. Uh. And you, you do this amazing job of being incredibly tethered in Christ, as you like to say, and really having that lens be your decision-making lens for everything that you do without, like I said, thumping the Bible on people's foreheads mm -hmm. every mm -hmm. two seconds. And it's evident in just the way that you move the way that you speak, the way that other people speak to you, the people that are in your circle, what you believe. I appreciate that, man. And well, I appreciate it too, because like I said, you're the first person I've ever met that I got to be friends with, that that's the case. Mm. And you really kind of redefined, you opened a door to what being a man of Christ could be that previously I, I couldn't get behind, mm. if that makes sense. What is that redefinition like? look or feel like for you now? Yeah, well, it looks like a normal person, <laughs> <laughs> which is, I know, like, common sense cool, right? But so many of the times I meet them, I'm just kind of like, these aren't the type of people that inspire me. These aren't the type of people that I really find myself being drawn to or admiring or respecting. There doesn't seem to be much depth. It's almost like their faith is their entire personality. Hmm. And not to say that your faith shouldn't deeply impact who you are, I mean, it probably should be the single greatest impact on who you are. Yeah. But you showed me that you can love training yeah. and getting fit and getting jacked and helping other people get healthy and get fit and get jacked and love Jesus. Yeah, you know, what comes to my mind as you talk about that. It's like sometimes some people, if, if you've probably met somebody like this, but it's like, let's say they're in the fitness industry and being a personal trainer is their personality. 100%. 
and it's like I, it just makes me think of like your personality and your character are two separate things well said. right i think like somebody who's not a believer could have an amazing personality and yet a component of their character could be in absence or not fully activated yet without an awareness of who mm. God really is, how he operates through them, how much he loves them, how he wants to show up for them, um, and just what he has to, to do in their life, like an understanding of the gifts that flow through them, you know? And so it's like, I think a lot of people put on their faith as their personality, mm. and it's like they're not really letting them shine. Mm. You know, like I thought I couldn't crack jokes or like, you know, be in the gym. Yeah. You know, without like it, like you had to be in the church, you had to be, you know, reading the Bible 24 7 to like be a follower, man. But I love what you said there, dude. It's like the character piece is a completely different thing than your personality. Right. You know, and you can be, I, I think God has a fun personality, so why can't we, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's so well said because that was really the differentiator is mm -hmm. like, okay, well, you can have your character and your personality. And your character can be totally infused with your faith in those principles. Yeah. And that's beautiful. And then you can add your personality on top of that. And then that's where the connective piece comes from and where you get people that can follow in your footsteps, which in many ways you've led me, you've been a primary leader to you know, my relationship with Jesus growing. Yeah. And so like this journey has taken a lot of faith. There's been so many points to where I was like, what am I doing? Was this right? Do I need to go back? How do I do this? What should I do here? So much uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And instead of running from that uncertainty, I actually just got led to not certainty in I know what the outcome will be, but certainty in that I'll know I'll be provided for. Mm -hmm. Assuming, I'd be interested in what you think about this, but assuming that I stay in alignment with what I believe God's will is for me. And you asked me before this question, how long was I thinking about doing personal training before I actually started doing it? Yeah. I said like about a year to two years. That last year, I was thinking about it all the time. And I always make the comparison to, I kind of felt like Jonah and the whale. Yeah. Like, okay, cool, I've got this finance degree, which in my world was prestigious, and it comes with job security and a high income and respect, and also a lot of certainty in terms of how to get from point A to point C. And here I was thinking about being a personal trainer, right, which kind of felt very rugged and, you know, bootstrapping, trailblazing, not sexy, super saturated, you know, competitive market. Mm -hmm. And I always used all of those sort of points I just gave as the sort of reasons why I didn't want to be a personal trainer, but I couldn't shake this feeling that that's where I was supposed to be going. And that feeling I, is what I mean by being in alignment with what I think God's will is for us. Like now that I'm doing it, I say I love it and that it's great and I'm so happy that I jumped, but before I jumped, I was terrified of it. I did not want to be a personal trainer. Yeah. It was just the thing that kept coming up in my head and I couldn't resist it. And as soon as I jumped and I decided to do it, all of a sudden the waves and the chaos and the storm in my life completely calmed. And although I had no idea how I was going to get three steps ahead, the next step kept showing up. You know, I found you, you hit me back, you invited me out. That just kind of started, you know, the chain of events. Yeah, we were and supposed to hang out before that too, right? Like it something fell through. Yeah, I think that kinda we were like gonna go get coffee. Yeah. And I remember being a little bit jaded. I think I, I think I canceled on you. You said you had a new client or like something rescheduled. Yeah, I think I was tired. I, needed, <laughs> I, legit, I think I needed a nap that day and I'm like, all right. Hilarious. There's a new person. Not quite a new client just yet. It's a meetup. I'm going to have to, like, if it's the right one, it'll come back around. Fair play. It came back around. Now, being on this side of the equation, I yeah. probably would have done the same thing. <laughs> I legit think I needed a nap that day. So I'm, like, thinking back, bro. Hey, look, I'm glad I got the napped version yeah. of Patrick. And yeah. I think it ended up working well because initially I was kind of jaded. I was like, man, I wanted a one-on-one -on -one with this guy. Yeah. I wanted to pick your brain. I had so many questions. 
And now I was like, now I got to go to the community event. There's going to be a bunch of other people there I'm not going to know. Got to share. I got to share, bro. I got to meet people. I was actually stressed uh, out about it. But shout out Cassandra. She got us a pizza, bro. Yeah, shout out to Cassandra. Yeah. The pizza was good, too. Yeah, and we nice just slice. spent walking around, so I was famished. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was good. It had a good white sauce on it, too. I remember that. Yeah, a little bit, bit different. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of, you know, we like a different kind of pizza. Yeah, Patrick's yeah. a classic marinara, extra marinara pepperoni guy. Yeah, thanks for remembering the extra. Yeah, that's yeah. an important part, bro. It, it, is, it fits it. his personality it a little bit. Saucy. Yeah, yeah. saucy. Um, saucy. My last question. I want to keep this bite-sized. We'll probably do another one at some point. By the way, sure. tonight, Andrew's going to be sharing... Um, at Trinity Church in Cedar Hill, his whole story on how he lost 100 pounds. Yeah. So if you're watching this on YouTube, if you're watching this like or listening to it on any of the podcast platforms, make sure to go to uh, the Patrick Bell um, YouTube and you'll be able to see his on there uploaded. I'll be live streaming it on my Facebook today too. If you're listening to this like right off the press and it's not up on YouTube yet, you can go ahead and get it on there. Um, but I'm excited for your story there. Here's my question, man. Like. A couple months back, we had a conversation in the church, the coffee shop in it, man, and you said you felt a peace beyond all understanding. I'm just mm. curious if that bike is still there. What a day that was. Yeah. That was the day that I came to Jesus. Yeah. Like, that was the day. Yeah. It was the moment. That was the moment. We'll have to expand on that at another time, but peace beyond understanding took me over and it was this deep profound unshakable peace for weeks if not months after that and it's it's wavered in its intensity somewhat yeah. but it hasn't left you know it hasn't really left if I look for it if I open myself up to receiving it it's yeah. like always there that's what's up, dude. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, dude, that was the first time I saw you just comfortable with saying, I don't know. Yeah. Like, it was like there was this hunger to always find an answer. Yeah. And there still is. I think it's one of your gifts, like, to, like, because you ask why a lot. Like, yeah. you're always, like, all right, let's go to the next layer, the next layer, the next layer. Like, you got a curiosity for how things work. No doubt. I'm sure you were probably the kid who, like, dismantled the battery packs and, like, looked at the electronics and, like, what, where is this, why is this here, what does it do? Yeah. Um, Very much so. But that was the first time, I think you asked the question, I was just like, oh, there's something like, when, when does it all make sense? Or like, you know, just like one of those very, One of like, those deep, like, in yeah. the existential <laughs> crisis <laughs> questions. Crisis. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, it was the first time rather than like, you're here and like have a thing about it, you're just like, hmm. I don't need to understand. Yeah, you didn't need to understand. And that's what it was. That was the first day where I was like. And this is actually, I believe this is, you said this to me. It's like, you don't need to understand to experience. Yeah. And if I'm not saying that exactly right, please like. No, you got it. Say it right, buddy. I was like, you're, you're right. Cause I'm, I'm feeling it. Yeah. And like, that was enough. Yeah. I don't remember what I said, but it sounds like someone said. It's what you said. I will not, <laughs> I will not forget that probably for the rest of my life. Yeah. But you don't need to understand to experience. That was the day. Um, or to know. That's what you said. You don't mm. need to understand to know. Mm. Yeah, that's what it was that shook you. Yeah. Wow. I can't remember if Karim was in the room yet then. Not yet. Yeah, not yet, dude. That was the day I made a Facebook post that I still remember to this day. And I think it came from that conversation. But it was like, um, Jesus gives peace beyond all understanding. Anxiety is peace that requires understanding. Mm. Mm. Anxiety is the need, or it's a peace that needs understanding. In order to quell yeah, the which anxious feeling. We all know is a is a unsatiable hunger because there's it always going to be one next layer. We're like, but what about tomorrow? Right. You know, but it's like if Christ gives peace beyond all understanding, it's like you just get to supersede all the busyness. You know. What a gift. What a gift, bro. What You're a gift, a gift bro. Oh, man, I appreciated you, bro. It's been yeah, a, such man. a pleasure being your friend, bro, and getting to learn from you, hang out with you, getting integrated with your family. Yeah, man. Man, and we're just getting started. It feels like, I feel like we're going to be rolling for a while. Just getting started, bro. Cool, yeah. man. Love Thanks for having day. me on. Absolutely, bro. Great session. Check them out.
IG. IG, Fitness with Feller. We do things, man. Facebook. Facebook, Andrew Feller. You on TikTok Never really YouTube? given my shout outs before. I'm not on TikTok, nor will I ever be on TikTok. Don't quote me on that. Yeah, that's what he said. Good stuff, man.